Hey everyone, welcome to my channel. It's Rebecca. Today we are doing a full face of CoverGirl. <laughs> I love doing a one brand um, video where I just pull everything out. We're gonna do from foundation to lips to mascara, all of it. Whatever I've got that's CoverGirl. Hi, welcome. Uh, thanks so much for clicking on this video. How's the first impression so far? Sorry, awkward. So what's fun about doing these full face of one brand <laughs> videos is that I realize where I gravitate towards when I'm shopping. I have a lot of lip liners and powder, <laughs> but I don't have any eyebrow products from CoverGirl. I have one. So I'm just gonna jump right into foundation. What I'm going to use is the True Blend, and I feel like this is kind of one of, you know, CoverGirl kind of has some OG products of like their clean makeup and makeup that just sort of has been around for quite some time with the brand. And I don't remember when they did a rebranding of the packaging and stuff like that on this, and they have a matte formula, and then they have their long wear. Um, and I just really love this. It's the straightforward true blend. It's pretty much for anybody, in my opinion. I have shade L6, which is buff beige, and it's been working pretty well. My pump on this guy kind of died. <laughs> so I've just been undoing it and then just like wiping off. Yeah, so. I just feel like this is such a straightforward foundation. I've said it before, I'll say it again. So I'm going to put it on with a sponge right now. I might do, I might do a brush, we'll see. Fragrance free, you know, I feel like that was another kind of drawback of CoverGirl is the fragrance. Things used to be that weird, the blush still has it. I'm gonna use my soft make and it still has that classic CoverGirl fragrance that just, you know, depending on when you first started using it, whether 80s, 90s, uh, 70s, like that's the smell you associate with that time. And I remember buying the foundation in high school. Um, and yeah, I just, it's so funny when, and the powder, my gosh, didn't we always have a CoverGirl compact in our, in our purses or our lockers in, the, in PE. Anyway, so if you can tell, I just slap that on pretty quickly and it looks just nice. I really like it. I really like that. Um, it is just so forgiving, so easy to go on. Lots of good concealers, classic. Of the ones out there, my favorites are the All Day Outlast, and I can't remember which packaging is newer, maybe this one, and so I love those, and then these guys, which are True Blend. So, how on brand of me to use the True Blend concealer with the True Blend foundation. This one, um, they came out with this kind of, this shade right here is perfect beige. It's a little bit, I remember buying it a little bit darker. I like that. I just really enjoy how this blends on. Also, I don't have an eyeshadow primer, but that's okay. I'm actually not You'll see what I use for the uh, my eye makeup today. I'm not gonna use powder shadows. Although the Naked uh, palettes are really good. That's a good color. I'm gonna kind of spot that here. I feel like I have a little bit of The seasons are changing. What? <laughs> what is this first grade? <laughs> like I need to tell you that. Um, <laughs> what I meant was, um, <clears throat> I can complete. I can tell that the with the days getting a little bit shorter, and you know, it's sort of the temperatures in the 
evening have dipped and then it can still reach almost, you know, like 80 degrees. Like we we're getting highs like about 79. Um, and it's so dry. Everything is so dry for us. You know, I know that probably we're a lot more humid than some places, but for us, it's pretty dry. Uh, and my skin has definitely noticed. My face skin is so, and actually my hands, my hands get really dry, my nails get brittle, and my face gets dry almost instantly. Let's do powder, powder. So I've got clean powder and clean fresh powder. <laughs> um, wow. So I bought this because someone told me a viewer said that this was kind of their powder foundation. And I gotta say, I couldn't really do that because it was too dry on me and this one still is scented. So if you're still finding this one, it is going to have a scent and that's probably why they came out with this one because when they went cruelty free and then I think this is their vegan line so this doesn't have a scent. Um, and it's a nice powder. It, it really is nice, um, but I also find it to just be not like, wow, it doesn't wow me, but it's nice. And then the one that wows me, you all know, is the blurring powder. But if you want something with a hint, a hint of sheen, we're talking Emilio Estevez's stepson. God, no. Um, and it's, yeah, like it's the hintiest hint of sheen. That would be the advanced radiance. So pretty. Okay, I'm gonna use, which shade am I gonna use? Let's use buff beige. Love this stuff. It fills in the cracks, right? Such a good powder. They still have, I think. They've done these before. They've done several of these. They have different generations of kind of palettes, face palettes. Um, this particular one I have, and it's honestly right now the only one I can find that's a bronzer and a highlighter because I can't, I was, as I'm pulling my stuff out, I'm going, do I have a CoverGirl bronzer? So, I don't know, is this it? It looks a little, it's very smooth. It has a beautiful texture when you feel it, but it's a bit on the yellow side. So I'm not quite sure if it's going to be the undertone I love. We're going to, we're going to go real. I like it. You know, now that CoverGirl is cruelty free, I just, I wish Revlon and Maybelline and L'Oreal, you guys need to jump on board. You do. Um, I, I just, yeah. <laughs> but I don't want to, I don't want to preach. Okay. So not bad actually, right? This is, we're, we're okay. What shade is this? This is the Rose Night. And I'm actually going to do my highlighter right now. Um, just got a little shop miss a brush. So this center highlighter, how are we doing here? It's got a little bit of glitter. You know, it's interesting. It's not very shiny. I also, I have a comp, I have a, I have a highlighter that, hmm, hmm, yeah, where is it? So this highlighter is, is okay. 
it's actually you can pretty much make it more subtle I think than you think at first uh, so it's not terrible but I see flecks of specks versus just um, you know reflection and I'm not thrilled with that so I'm gonna stop what I am gonna do is put on my soft mink blush this stuff is six or seven dollars I hope you know, if they want to repackage it and make it fragrance free, be my guest, but please don't ever get rid of this cover girl. Okay, please. Thank you because it's really good. We really, really like it. <laughs> yeah. Oh man. So also it reminds me of babysitting in the eighties. Um, the girl that I was babysitting, her mom had her makeup out on her bathroom. And when um, the girl would take, um, I'd have to, it was like bath time was in, or shower time was in her parents' bathroom. And so I would supervise and I would just be like looking at the makeup on, I was 12. The girl I was babysitting was like, four or five and I would just be like looking at all this woman's makeup and I was just mm, I was I was uh, I was I was lusting after but I did not touch it I mean come on right gross um, so the blush this blush the reason I love it is it's a beautiful shade very forgiving for skin types skin shades like mine and it has a hint of luminousness to it. So I feel like I'm seeing both, I'm seeing both the highlighter that I first put on, but this blush as well. And I like it. I have one CoverGirl eyebrow. I might've had a pencil somewhere or I might've had some other brow thing that I've since gotten rid of, but at this point, I only have this easy breezy brow, which I remember reviewing and I thought it was really weird. And then I thought, you know what, actually this is better than it for, at, on first impression. So it's a bit, it's like a fiber brow gel, but it's kind of thick. Um, and it's not, it's just a little bit different than you expect. And I think it can come on, apply really heavy, maybe when you don't want it, or maybe, am I thinking of something else with a wand and fibers? So I like this product. I think it was just kind of like a use with caution because if you pull it out of the tube and just start slapping it on your eyebrows, you will find it to be, uh, very intense and maybe not what you bargained for. It's it's pulling the feathery, it's making the feathery brows happen, so. Lately what I've been really enjoying is CoverGirl's cream eye products. So a couple years ago, they came out with the Exhibitionist Lid Paint. I have three shades of it. I like, this is shade Nude Awakening, and it does a really nice job of creating a, just blends over your lid. This one is kind of a matte, so it, it makes like a nice lid base. Cocoa Nuts. These nuts. And Amaretto, okay. So Cocoa Nuts is more deep taupe, still a matte, like a satin matte, and Amaretto is a really pretty silvery taupe shade. That, that's lovely. I really, really enjoy that. Then we've got the Queen Ship <laughs> Lollipop True Naked Queen Ship, and I have shades 935 and 910. These are good, but sometimes they can be a bit of a stinker. Um, so this one also feels like this one. It's almost like a darker version. 
So let's do eye makeup with this. And I'm just going to do it everywhere. I just feel like the pencil, the queen ship pencil, I really love these crayons, excuse me. I do enjoy these. However, I feel like they're less forgiving. They um, kind of, they just want to, once you put them on, they really want to stay put. So you just can't change your mind. Also, the fact that I am putting it over that um, other liquid could m be making a situation of like super, super durable. <laughs> Like they're both going, hey, I was here. Hey, I'm long wear. Hey, hey, you know. Let's just go underneath here. That seems to always disappear, my lower lid. Okay, so okay. another pencil they just, I showed you, they just came out with, so the CoverGirl, the creamy eyeshadow stick in the clean formula. So they don't indicate color, like there's nothing of a color thing on here. These are more slim, so they have a bit more control. Um, they do have the sharpener at the bottom. I like these, but the shades are a little interesting. I've only found these kind of pastel shades. So there's this sort of a pinkish mauve, and then I have this shade right here, which is really kind of fun, uh, but it's like, hello, it's lilac. Like, where'd you come from? Okay, so you know, but they do wear well, and the fact that the crayon part is smaller than other crayons it's kind of nice just doing that for something unexpected and then i am going to go in with amaretto okay And we're gonna do the brush. And we're gonna just do this. mascaras I have really enjoyed this lash blast clean and this full lash bloom I don't remember if I've tried it I don't remember when it came out um, this is a new tube the also the covergirl exhibitionist I was a fan of too it has that thick brush covergirl mascara is so many people absolutely love it and I'm kind of in between. I think I have some favorites um, from other brands. This one has such a large wand. It's actually really good. So I'm gonna do, I'm kind of going to do all three. Um, I guess per personally, I've just been never bowled over by a CoverGirl mascara. But I like it. But I, I mean, don't get me wrong. I do like them. I'm just, Got some others, got some others. Okay, let's see what this one, I don't remember what this one does. This bloom one. It's the, it's the 
wand isn't as thick. The whole kind of circumference isn't as much as the uh, Lash Blast Clean, but it's similar bristles. But I am poking myself. Oh my God, these bristles. I'm literally poking the tight water line of my eyelid. Okay. But I didn't do that with these. Let's do exhibitionist. Yeah, this one was kind of more, I don't know, that like fibery. So let me know if you have a favorite CoverGirl mascara and then I'll let you know if I've tried it and I like it. <laughs> okay, so they have really good exhibitionist crayon liners. This is Caramel Nude. I have another one in Nude something. Uh, CoverGirl lip products have come a long way. They used to be that kind of chalky, pasty, old lady grandma lipstick smell. <laughs> especially if you use like a frosted pink and then as it wore away your lips would just have kind of that orange tinge so i think that they have just done a great job getting into you know this century um, i do love the cream formulas and i love the nude formulas um, this one there's also a demi matte and i really like that the silver tube, so this silver tube is matte, and I prefer the black tube that's a cream, but it's good. They are good. So I'm gonna do car caramel nude. The slant on this makes it really nice to a high. It's really good. It's really good. Champagne, so good. Okay. This has a bit, like just a vanilla, like a slight. So creamy, really. So here we are. Way to go, CoverGirl. It's a little bit sparkly right here, but it's really nice. I am, let me give you my highlights, okay? Big fan. <laughs> big fan, big fan. <laughs> the powders, preferably powders without scent. Uh, so good. Lip liner, so good. Lid paints, lid paints, so good. Cream lipstick, so good. Let me know in the comments what other brands you wanna see me do a full face of, and I hope you enjoyed this video. I will link everything below. If you wanna shop, please do so. It's just nice to help me out. I do get, this video isn't sponsored, but my links for shopping have just a teeny tiny bit of commission. Uh, what else? So, there you are. <laughs> All right, thanks so much for watching. I hope you're doing great, and I'll see you next time. Bye.